Hi everyone, I'm Linda Reimer, one of the librarians at the Southeast Dubin County Library. Welcome to Library Connections, our weekly readers, viewers, and listeners advisory video cast. Enjoy. Library Connections number 79. This is the Friday, December 3rd, 2021 edition of Library Connections. And I have to just say, wow, where on earth did November go? December seems to have arrived very quickly. Having digressed on that note, let's jump into the top five fiction bestsellers for this week from the New York Times. At number one, Go Tell the Bees That I Am Gone by Diana Gabaldon, the ninth book in the Outlander series. As the Revolutionary War moves closer to Fraser's Ridge, Claire and Jamie reunite with their daughter and her family. At number two, The Becoming by Nora Roberts, the second book in the Dragon Heart Legacy series. Breen returns to Telma as her grandfather Orderen plots destruction. At number three, Fear No Evil by James Patterson, the 29th book in the Alex Cross series. Cross fights the mastermind who has stalked him for years. At number four, The Judge's List by John Grisham, the second book in the Whistler series. Investigator Lacey Stoltz goes after a serial killer and closes in on a sitting judge. And at number five, The Wish by Nicholas Sparks. Maggie Dawes, a renowned travel photographer, struggles with a medical diagnosis over Christmas. Moving on to the top and on to the top five nonfiction bestsellers of the week. At number one, The 1619 Project, edited by Nicole Hannah Jones, Caitlin Roper, Elena Silverman, and Jake Silverstein. Viewing America's entanglement with slavery and its legacy in essays adapted and expanded from the New York Times Magazine. At number two, Will by Will Smith with Mark Manson, the actor, producer, and musician tells his life story and lessons he has learned along the way. At number three, The Storyteller by David Grawl, a memoir by the musician known for his work with Foo Fighters and Nirvana. At number four, The Lyrics, 1956 to the Present by Paul McCartney, a two volume celebration of 154 songs with handwritten texts, paintings, and photographs from the songwriter's archives. And at number five, These Precious Days by Ann Patchett, essays on friendship, influences, and the connection between life and art. Our first recommended read for this week is the new Jeffrey Deaver thriller, The Midnight Lock. Deaver fans, sit up and take notice, Lincoln Rhyme is back. It's been three years since the last novel in the series, which is a long time to wait, but the good news is that the wait has been worth it. This is Prime Rhyme, a fiendishly smart villain, bewildering crimes, plenty of plot twists, and Lincoln, the quadriplegic criminologist who is at his cranky, belligerent, brilliantly clever best. A man who calls himself the locksmith is breaking into women's homes 
while the victims are there, moving things around, leaving creepy messages, and the question, of course, is why? He seems to be simply showing off, demonstrating that no security system can keep him out. But what's his plan? And can Rhyme and his associates track the locksmith down before he escalates? Although he's distracted by a previous case, Rhyme never loses focus. Deaver is a master plotter, and Rhyme is, as always, a compelling hero, the kind of sleuth whose main appeal comes from watching his mind at work. And that's the book list review. Our second recommended read for this week is the new Mary blog novel, Someone Perfect. Bestseller blog keeps her Westcott family Regency series going strong with a 10th installment that is perhaps the best yet. Justin Wiley and his younger half-sister Maria were closest children, but haven't seen each other in the 12 years since Maria and her ailing mother moved from the family estate of Everly Park to Prospect Hall, where Maria cared for her mother until her death. Justin, now the Earl of Brandon, becomes 20-year-old Maria's guardian and invites her to return to Everly. But he's shocked to find her cold and disdainful and full of resentment toward him. In an effort to ease her transition, Justin hosts a weeks-long house party, inviting relatives from both sides of the family, as well as Maria's former neighbors, the fiercely independent Lady Estelle Lamar, and her brother Bertrand. Estelle initially dislikes Justin, having heard Maria's negative views on the man. But as they become better acquainted, she begins to question the things she's been told. As the attraction builds between them, Justin works to convince Estelle to consider his suit. Blog is a master of Regency romance, expertly exploring her character's hidden depths and teasing out their carefully guarded secrets while also keeping the pace flying. This is a delight. And that's the Publisher's Weekly Review. And on a reader's note, as mentioned, this is the 10th book in the series. If you'd like to start reading the Westcott series at the beginning, check out book number one, titled Someone to Love. Our first audiobook recommendation for this week is The Invisible Life of A.D. LaRue by B.E. Schwab. The audio is narrated by Julia Whelan, and this title has recently been added to the Hoopla catalog as an instant checkout audiobook, which means everyone listening to this could go to the Hoopla catalog assuming you have a Southeast Steuben County Library card, and instantly check out this audio. Having a life no one will remember, and a story you will never forget. France, 1714. In a moment of desperation, a young woman makes a Faustian bargain to live forever. And she is cursed to be forgotten by everyone she meets. Thus begins the extraordinary life of A.D. LaRue and a dazzling adventure that will play out across centuries and continents, across history and art, as a young woman learns how far she will go to leave her mark on the world but everything changes when after nearly 300 years, Aidy stumbles across a young man in a hidden bookstore and he remembers her name. 
in the vein of the time traveler's wife and life after life the invisible life of ad larue is new york times best-selling author v e schwab's genre defying tour de force and it's a fun book in audio too so if you haven't read it or listened to it yet check it out our second audiobook recommendation for this week is fantasy it's called the keeper of night by kylie lee baker the audio is narrated by rebecca yeo ren scarborough is half british reaper half japanese shinigami both sides of her non-mortal heritage specialize in collecting souls for death unfortunately her japanese appearance means that she's not accepted in victorian england where ren has no friends except her younger half-brother nevin when their father disowns and abandons her ren decides to try her luck with a shinigami accompanied by loyal nevin she travels to japan to find and work for the japanese goddess of death izanami however with the exception of hiro a handsome and attentive shinigami ren discovers that her british reaper blood is scorned by the japanese shinigami culture she hoped would accept her baker's debut is atmospheric building very different alternate realities colored by fascinating mythological creatures and satisfying romance however it is ren's longing for acceptance as a bicultural being that gives the story its heart a cliffhanger ending will have readers anxiously awaiting the final title in this duology definitely going on my reading list moving on to our first streaming recommendation for this week i'm going to recommend an entire series the jeffersons seasons 1 through 11 and yes indeed that's the whole enchilada can be streamed from amazon prime video the series was created by norman lear don nichol and michael ross and stars isabel sanford sherman hemsley marla gibbs and a terrific ensemble cast and here's the overview of the series the african-american jefferson family had been introduced in 1971 as the across the street neighbors of the lily white bunker family on the groundbreaking cbs sitcom all in the family for a long time the only jefferson we ever saw was lionel son of george and louise jefferson who dropped in at the bunkers to trade pleasantries with edith gloria and mike and to subtly mock the racist views of xenophobic archie bunker who never quite caught on that he was being mocked gradually lionel's mom louise jefferson began showing up as did louise's brother-in-law henry only in 1973 did louise's husband george make his first appearance the owner of a thriving dry cleaning establishment a cocky pugnacious george had as low an opinion of white people as archie bunker had of blacks and their frequent titlings became all in the family highlights it was halfway through season five that george jefferson who through acquiring a chain of dry cleaning stores had managed to accumulate a great deal of money moved his family out of the bunker's blue collar neighborhood in the bronx and into a deluxe high-rise apartment on manhattan's east side thus began the spin-off sitcom the jeffersons which made its cbs debut on january 18th 
1975. And that's the all movie overview of a classic series. If you're not familiar with it, check it out. And our second streaming recommendation for this week is about a 360 degree turn from the first. It's the new film, The Power of the Dog. And I wouldn't say it's a comedy in any way, shape or form. This one's definitely a drama. Directed by Jane Campion, the movie stars Benedict Cumberbatch, Kirsten Dunst, and Jesse Plemons. You can stream it now through Netflix. Set in Montana in the 1920s, Jane Campion's hotly anticipated new film is an enthralling revisionist Western. A wash in sublime expanses and nuance capturing a landscape and a people driven by the fantasy and folly of Western expansion. Adapted from Thomas Savage's cult novel of the same name, The Power of the Dog tells the story of successful rancher brothers, George and Phil Burbank, whose relationship sours when the more mild-mannered George marries local widow Rose. Rose and her son Peter arrive at the Burbank Ranch seemingly wholesome and naive. An attempt to fit into the family's complex dynamic of new money. But they are continually stymied by an unspoken brotherly bond. Phil's past as a classic scholar at Yale is barely discernible as he sports a tough and dirty exterior while frequently referring to the antics of his mentor Bronco Bill. Cumberbatch shines in this ferocious performance as a cowboy to the core whose hurtful macho quips towards Peter and his mother hint at a simmering menace and a capacity for erratic cruelty and violence, a kind of camouflage that only serves to repress deep-seated trauma and latent desire. Proving once again that she is one of today's greatest filmmakers, Campion delivers a fascinating study of masculinity and eternal torment, subverting the codes of the Western and of the male gaze in a universe that is always shifting in tone, rendered with stunning cinematography by Ari Wegner, a disorienting score by Johnny Greenwood, and a terrific ensemble cast. That review, which is the shortest one I could find, is from the International Film Festival I wouldn't be surprised if this movie, and again, I'm a librarian, so I won't give up my day job. I don't have a crystal ball, but I wouldn't be surprised if this might win an Oscar for film of the year. We'll have to wait and see. It sounds awfully dark to Linda, though. You might want to check out The Jeffersons instead, but if you like dark westerns, The Power of the Dog is the one to watch. Moving on to our third streaming recommendation for this week, it's the new film, Tick, Tick, Boom directed by Lin-Manuel Miranda and starring Andrew Garfield, Alexandra Shipp, and Robin DeSeuss. You can stream this one from Netflix. Lin-Manuel Miranda makes his feature directorial debut in this adaptation of Jonathan Larson's autobiographical musical. Larson the revolutionary creator of Rent, preceded his masterpiece with this unique, brooding, introspective musical about a young composer who is waiting tables in 1990s New York City while desperately working on what he hopes will be the next great American musical. Andrew Garfield stars as John the composer facing mounting pressure from all directions as he tries to navigate the biggest crossroad of his life. 
And that again is the shortest review I could find. It's the Digital Trends Review. But if you like the work of Lynn Manuel Miranda, if you liked Hamilton, in other words, check this out. And finally, our Hoopla recommendation for this week. I'm going to recommend season seven of the Brokenwood Mysteries. In series seven of this delightful New Zealand mystery, detectives Mike Shepard, Kristen Sims, and Sam Breen investigate the murder of an antiques show host, a death at a health retreat, a deadly bank robbery, a killing at a farmer's market, a fatal fire at a historic cinema, and a 1970s theme party that turns lethal. And if you like country and western music, classic tunes, keep in mind that the main detective here, Mike Shepard, does too. Broken Wood Mysteries, Season 7, but if you haven't checked it out, the entire series is great fun, and being set in New Zealand, the scenery is fantastic. Library Connections videos premiere on Facebook Fridays at 1 p.m. and may also be found on the Southeast Stabenn County Library's YouTube channel. Have questions about this weekly video cast? Let me know. Send an email to me at rymorell at stls.org and I'll get back to you. And a note on library hours. The library is open Monday through Friday from 9 a.m to 7 p.m. We're open on Saturday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. and we're closed on Sundays. The library's website is found at ssclibrary.org and you can find a whole host of information on our website about upcoming events. You can access our catalogs, schedule a curbside appointment, and much more. Again, that's ssclibrary.org. StarCat and its companion app, Bookmine. StarCat is the catalog of physical library materials available to all cardholders of the public libraries in the Southern Tier Library System. STLS encompasses the public libraries in Steuben, Chemung, Yates, Schuyler, and Allegheny Counties. StarCat is found online at starcat.stls.org. And the companion app Bookmine, which is B-O-O-K-M-Y-N-E, is available in your app store. If you'd rather access the catalog through the app, download it from your app store. The Digital Catalog and its companion app Libby. The Digital Catalog is available online at stls.overdrive.com. The Digital Catalog features eBooks, downloadable audiobooks, in a handful of streaming videos. And if you would rather access the digital catalog and its content through an app, the app is called Libby, L-I-B-B-Y. You can download it from your app store and access the same catalog of items through the app. Hoopla, and of course it's a companion app also called Hoopla. The Hoopla catalog features eBooks, comic books, full length albums, downloadable audiobooks, and streaming videos, including both TV shows and movies. All Hoopla items are available for instant checkout for Southeast Bend County Library cardholders with a maximum of six checkouts per month. The Hoopla catalog is available online at hoopladigital.com, or you can download the app to your mobile device or smart TV. Communicating with the library. An important thing, if you have questions about library materials or services, you are welcome to go the traditional route and simply give us a call. The library's telephone number is area code 607-936-3713. We have the same phone number we've had for decades. So if you have an old phone book flooding around the house, you'll find our number in your phone book too. And you can also connect with the library via social media. The library has pages on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. 
library blogs. We have five of them. We have the Book Club for Adults blog, which is found at ssclbook.club. And you guessed it, that one focuses on the monthly adult book club. We have the Corning NY History blog, which is our local history blog, which is found at corningnyhistory.com. Creation Stationery, our makerspace blog, found at creationstationery.com. Story Musings, a blog hosted by the library's resident author and head of adult services, Michelle Wells, found at storymusing.blogspot.com, and Tech and Book Talk, a readers, viewers, and listeners advisory, which is found at ssctech.com. And here briefly are our references for this week. And that's the program for this week. I'll be back next week with a new edition of Library Connections. Have a great week.